Was our first feature uh, Point Break? Did we do that before no, Tremors? Not officially, yeah. Right, so as a company, Tremors would be the first, technically the yeah. first feature. I guess, I don't know. Someone should Google that. Are you gonna ask us <laughs> questions or do you want us to start talking? Could you introduce each other? I would love to. I would like to introduce you to Tom Woodruff Jr., who is the co-founder of Amalgamated Dynamics. I'd like to introduce you to Alec Gillis. He's the co-founder of ADI, home of the Oscar-winning Creature Effects team. When people think of practical effects creatures, you think of non-computer generated characters. We've been lucky to be involved with some of the biggest and best of uh, those types of monsters. We did the worms and tremors. We did the fat makeups on Tim Allen and the Santa Claus. All the practical animals in Jumanji. We've done the alien, we've done the predator. Starship we've... troopers. I wasn't done. Well, you can keep going, buddy. And of course, there's always the gorilla. Cut, right, now that's perfect, right? That, now we cut putting the gorilla costume. We started performing our own creatures because we both had this sort of uh, observation of stuntmen, despite their talents and their skills, them going into a creature suit and not really knowing how to make a creature suit work. It would be very weird for us to just say, we're gonna build something and then bring it to set and say, now what? Are you hungry? You want some food? Are you hungry? If you're a digital animator, you build the character and you follow through and you make it move and you bring it to life. So that's our philosophy is the final step is performance because that's where it lives. You want to try a little tiny piece? Here, go ahead, go ahead. What do you think, you want some more? You, hey, hey, he's, listen, listen, I can get you fresh bread. I can, I can get you fresh bread. Tremors is an example of a film that was from the pre-digital era. And if you look at it, the practical effects, they've stood the test of time and we're proud of that. Digital effects can do things that we can't possibly do. Practical effects have a presence to them that, that even the best CGI work gets close to but doesn't completely achieve. In other words, there's more emotion, I believe, to a practical creature than to a digital creature. Wave to the camera and say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. He's so temperamental. This is a billion dollars, we think. And that billion dollars belongs to RJ Rappaport. And he's considered the king of cash. King of fake cash. Okay, king of fake cash. My name is Rich RJ Rappaport, and I'm the president of RJR Props. Just a few years ago. Actually, it was <laughs> nine years ago. Oh, sorry, nine years ago. RJR Props was born. It's a full service prop house but its specialty is cash, fake cash. And there's only a few people who can legally make it, and RJ is one of them. We work with 50 Cent, Kendrick Lamar, Lil Wayne, Fat Joe, Young Dolph. And that's just to name a few. RJ's prop money has been used in over 175 feature films, television shows, and music videos. And he devoted three full years to perfecting that crisp green paper we call money prop money. And we went down a long path in working with the Secret Service and learning all the laws to make sure that everyone that uses it, it will be legal for them and it'll look fantastic. But for those who don't follow the rules, they could wind up in big trouble. There was a rash of arrests. People were just literally jailed because they were using prop money that looked too real. And I said to myself, I'm not going to touch this unless I know I'm doing it legally. Alongside the Secret Service, RJ created two different styles of prop money. One that is printed on both sides and is perfect for that classic bank robbery scene. The other kind is so close to the real deal, it can only be printed on one side. Otherwise, it could end up in circulation. It's designed for the classic money shot, AKA this the close-up. It's a tough business. We all work hard in it, and prop money especially is not easy. Yeah, sounds like it. Thanks, RJ, for keeping fake money real. We 
usually get up about seven. Yeah, and I usually get up a little later. I make coffee for both of us. I like honey and cream in my coffee. And then I almost always drive to work. Our morning routine is quite mundane. Oh yeah. One thing we're doing today is the fire breathing dragon, finishing off that. Yeah, and I've got some stuff to blood and some skulls and pumpkins. I'm Marcia, this is my husband Ed, and we run Distortions Unlimited. We make monsters, zombies, aliens, dragons, and beasts of all kinds. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what we make is scary, I will say that. We make monsters for everyone from Home Haunter all the way up to amusement parks and big events all around the world. We've been working together for 35 years. It's been glorious. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> we started out painting together. I fell in love very quickly. Oh, oh. We've been married almost 25 years. We've found a way to work together. I'm probably more on the business side and Ed is probably more in the production. I can't tell you how many people have told me I could never work with my spouse. And I, that's too bad because you miss half or more of that whole person's life if you don't. I think people expect us to be a little bit weirder than we are and we're actually a little bit boring. When we get in the car and go home, it's over. We love monsters, we just, we've had enough of it after a long day. There's a separation there, there has to be, you'd go crazy. If somebody walked into our house, they wouldn't have a clue what we do. In fact, we keep it all kind of secret. Yeah, people are surprised about that with us. We like it that way. It's really special to do something you love with somebody you love. We make monsters, but whatever, our personalities kind of mesh with each other, so it works out. You know, you really can establish a good relationship as you're dripping zombie blood. Right. That's the kind of woman I need in my life. When you're watching a television show or a movie and you see an actor holding a magazine or a book or a letter, a lot of what you're seeing on the screen was custom made by people like me. Let me see their paperwork. If I've done my job right in creating that piece of paper, the possibilities are literally endless. I mean, one single piece of paper can communicate a huge amount in telling the audience about the character or about the scene. It's figuring out how this thing can best do its job of being a part of the story. My name is Ross McDonald and I create paper props for movies and television. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with comics, was obsessed with paper and illustration, and really loved that world that I was reading or seeing on paper. I've done a little bit of everything. For years, I worked as a magazine and newspaper illustrator, book illustrator. That eventually led me into making props. For the last 25 years, I've made tens of thousands of paper props for close to 50 television shows and movies. My first major motion picture was Baby's Day Out, and I was hired basically as an illustrator to illustrate a faux 1930s children's book. Take the book. I've done literally tens of thousands of props for all five seasons of Boardwalk Empire. I did the Pawnee Charter for an episode of Parks and Recreation. For Joy, I did all of the patents for the mops that we for see. For Hateful Eight, I, I did, did the Red Apple, National Treasures, Tobacco, the Book of Secrets, I the Nick, the I Book of Secrets, Silver Lining, Corpse, Playbook, and I, for The Wizard of Lies, I did Book of Eli, Barnes, I did The Legend of the Assassination, 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 I did The Legend of the
I've designed everything from passports and maps and travel documents, wanted posters, government forms, FBI reports, psychiatric files, agent identification folders, anything that's made of paper I've made at one time or another. Part of what you need to figure out when you're making a paper prop is the backstory of the piece of paper. You don't just take a new book and slosh brown ink on it to make it look old. You gotta figure out how it got worn, how it got dirty. The scene might involve an actor reading three lines out of a letter, but you have to figure out how old is it? What kind of paper is it made out of? How was the paper made? Should it be made with carbon paper? Should it be on onion skin? Is some guy gonna pull out a rumpled piece of paper from his pocket or is he gonna pull it out of a file folder? What color paper should it be? Should it be yellow? Should it be white? Should it be ivory colored? Who's signing it? What does their handwriting look like? What kind of ink are they using when they write it? What kind of pen are they using? And then, because no letter is ever three lines, you have to write the rest of the copy in the letter. Depending on what I'm making, a project can take, you know, a, a day, an hour, uh, weeks, months. Every page is filled out, every book has text on it, and pictures. Every paper in the file folder is, is a real document that's all filled out and created. For example, for the Book of Secrets, they said, just come up with secrets. So I said, okay, well, let's do Roswell, let's do the Kennedy assassination, let's do all these crazy conspiracy theory things. Then there was the research into those specific things. So you have to find all that, figure out how to recreate it convincingly. It was a huge undertaking. It took about four months to really build that prop. And it's just communicated in a split second in the scene. Let's see here, what do we got here? Have you seen the evening paper? I have here pieces of paper. There's so many amazing things that start off with a piece of paper. And the props that I'm making are all part of that. Sometimes when I go to the theater, I'm, I'm so excited I'm almost shaking. And it's not because I wanna see the driver's license I made for one of the actors. It's because I, I did a tiny bit of work on that movie and it, that's very exciting to me. In the end, you've produced this thing which, you know, you've done your best job of nailing, getting absolutely right. And, you know, sometimes I'm just like, wow. When you see something like that in the what final product the and realize that this thing you worked on uh, is this huge moment in the story, that can be just really, really a great feeling.